begin to harness your knowledge in a positive manner that will lead to positive impact on the economy. Swifter Systems and Services, Victor Asemota, while highlighting strategies employed by some African countries to address real problems, challenge banks and fintech companies to first have an understanding of what people do. The job here for both fintech and banking is to actually look at what people really do, find out what they really need, and provide them the services to solve their problems. Managing Director of First Bank of Nigeria Limited is optimistic that the summit has set a new tone for the digital space. So we're banks, we have customers, by 80 million customers uh, counted, uh, and they have solutions, they have products, and we can work together for me to be able to get those products to the customers. This is really what it's about. How do we collaborate better? Banks, the technology industry, fintechs. That's what all this is about. We see Our partners will help us in expanding our channels. We have an app, we have a web platform, and we also have a telesales team. And they're very efficient, but we're trying to expand. And also, most importantly, we're trying to reach the general trade, those people that exist in the mass markets that are also retailers, that also need assistance. There was a breakout session where panelists centered discussions on SMEs and business, technology and lifestyle, and security and regulatory compliance. Still on events, the Ofala Festival of Onicha Kingdom has continued to expand by many dimensions. Ekene Undului reports that the official sponsors of the festival, Globalcom, spiced the 2019 edition with a royal banquet in honor of the Obi of Onicha, Igwe Alfred Anemeka Achibe. The 2019 Ofala Festival witnessed a display of the rich cultural heritage of our nature kingdom, spanning over one week of entertainment for both visitors and residents. Rooted in deep spirituality, the Ofala is the high point of the Onicha ceremonial cycle. Over the past nine years, Globacom has partnered with organizers of the event to add more excitement. At this year's event, customers of the Globe brand in Onicha won five brand new tricycles and other consolation prizes after a raffle draw. I want to say a very big thank you to Globalcom Nigeria Limited and I want them to keep up doing the good job that they are doing and let God bless their business as they continue to thrive. I'm grateful. I'm happy. It's just like I'm dreaming. I never expected. I was just buying airtime from the office at New Market Road. So as God will have it, I've been blessed today for my efforts. The Royal Banquet that followed the festival saw the presentation of cash prizes from Globacom to winners of age grade competitions. Culture is one of the originating culture that we have in this supported over time. So culturally, if you ask us, it's a, it's a way of bringing up the culture of our people to ensure that even the new, the younger ones imbibe the culture of our forefathers. Globacom has been wonderfully, you know, useful to us. They have taken us Globacom has remained a critical partner in positioning the Onicha Ofala Festival as one of the biggest festivals in Nigeria. And as guests finally depart from the banquet, organizers look forward to continued partnership. The Ofala Festival keeps living up to its billing. Nigerian delegates and their counterparts from countries of the continent are in the ancient city of Benin, Edo State, for this year's National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFEST. The official opening is tomorrow, Monday. 
Ivi Omori reports that preparations for the highly anticipated festival have reached a crescendo. Even as the chief custodian of culture and tradition, the Benin monarch marks three years on the throne of his father's day. Indeed, the aim of the festival is to unite Nigerians. Representatives from many states of the Federation are here already. For the next one week, these ones will showcase their culture for the world to see. They have arrived to the host city, Benin, with assurance of giving their A game just in line with the theme of the festival, our royalty, our pride. We come with all the competitive events and non-competitive events. Our artists are now equal to do this time around. Their costume, we believe, we should tell the world that this is Enugu. You must win. In fact, we all win. If we already win, that's the confidence they have. This is the Oba Kenzo Cultural Center. For the period of the event, this location will serve as the cultural village. It was renovated for this purpose by the state government. The venue has been adorned with banners reflecting the rich culture of the means. There's been a lot of excitement. The people should be expecting a lot of guests. You know, like I said, now we have over 3,000 people on ground already. So more people are going to come. More will come tomorrow, more will come later in the night, and more will come during the week. The Uniben Sports Complex is also in its final state of beautification as the countdown things out. It will serve as the venue for the opening and closing ceremony that will feature various performances. The participants have no worries about accommodation too, as the federal government girls' college hostel will build their abode for the period. Up till late hours of Saturday, the Benin airport was expectedly busier than normal. I don't think this year is going to be a huge platform to empower the people, create jobs. Over 500 tourists are invited to be cultural ambassador of this great state. Welcome the people in the Benin way and let them feel at home. Trust in our friends to make good use of the turnover of persons for brisk business. Makeshift shops are already sold out. Very much ready. I have put necessary just like participants of our state are coming to showcase their culture, the Benins, the hosts, are ready to showcase their own culture that has stood the test of time despite the onslaught of modern day civilization. With all put in place, it is safe to say all is now set for the festival. Meanwhile, dignitaries, including our first delegates, have been felicitating with the Oba of Benin on its third year coronation anniversary and birthday celebration, which fell within the scheduled period for our first. Congratulations to the Benin Monarch and we hope to bring highlights of the festival in due course. Premium Pensions Limited, one of Nigeria's fastest growing pension fund administrators, has unveiled a new brand identity in Lagos. Lil Lineke reports that a customer-friendly product was also introduced to the public for the event. This newly unveiled identity, Premium Pension says, aligns with the company's drive to maintain its leadership position in the sector. The brand says it has stayed innovative over the years by exploring possible means of providing optimal satisfaction for customers. It is a brand that will make some bold, minimal statements about dominance. It evolves presence. It evolves reliability. It evolves longevity. And above all, it evolves premium. The newly introduced mobile application is a blend of the old and the new, designed to give customers value and a premium experience. This is the essence of business, to be innovative, to be self-assessing, and to ensure that you create value and improve service. The board group has been part of this success story as we are one of the private sector employers or clients making the most pension remittance on a monthly and accumulative basis. 
the new application, officials of the company says, has special features that give customers easy access to their retirement savings accounts, which will aid the ongoing pensions industry's data recapturing exercise. A lot of things have actually gone into, you know, I mean, getting 2.0, and I think there will be a really different customer experience. It's been 14 years of joy, excitement, and fulfillment. Premium Pension Limited was established in 2005 to provide a wide range of financial services to a substantial and diversified client base. With headquarters in Abuja, the company has offices in many cities in Nigeria. The next one is a major celebration. It was an avalanche of eulogies for the man who never negotiated the unity of Nigeria and has for many decades lived to preach unity, peace, and nationhood. Now 85, the country is grateful and appreciative of his love, sacrifice, and service to the nation. A dinner to celebrate his birthday drew people from across all divides who showed up to salute the living legend. Kunle Adeyeye will now reveal to us the man of the moment. Of cream de la cream in Nigeria. They are celebrating a man who navigated the country at one of its most trying periods. From the political class to the academia, traditional rulers to technocrats, encomiums poured in for the man who insisted Nigeria's unity is not negotiable and demonstrated that in words and action. His main claim to fame is his stewardship of Nigeria through troubling times of strife and civil war in the late 60s. When we contemplate the life and service of General Yakubu Gawain, we are in the presence of a rare Nigerian political figure who is fully deserving to be referred to as a statesman. To His Royal Highness Apollos Chu, who shares Gawain's vision of an indivisible Nigeria, it's time to justify his long-standing relationship with a former head of state who he sees as a role model and a national icon. That's why he came all the way from River State to be part of this event. All he wishes the octogenarian is good health in old age. He's the father of the nation. He has contributed so much for this country and then and Africa as a whole. He's a man that he will live in the memory of all Nigerians. And then I thank all members of Nigeria who are here to honor him. Yakub Gowon reminiscenced on his time as the head of state and his post-leadership rule. We thank God for everything. And uh, let me say this. I thank God for making me a Nigerian and giving me the opportunity uh, to, uh, and, and helping me uh, to ensure that Nigeria continues for the sake of all of you, the younger ones. General Gowon's stance for decades is that Nigeria stands to gain more united than divided. The former head of state ruled Nigeria between 1966 and 1975 and has remained a rallying point for all Nigerians both in terms of peace and conflict, a role that has earned him the respect and trust of all Nigerians. We wish General Yakubu Gowan many more years and good health. Humanitarians are often appreciated on special days and for his selfless services to people in need, family and friends of engineer Dr. Sanusi used the opportunity of his birthday celebration to shower encomiums on him. Here are snippets of the high-powered party that held in Badu, Oyo State. immensely to the development of humanity, it was time for family, friends, and well wishes to appreciate his kind gesture. 
Chief Dr. Sanusi, a philanthropist, is a man cherished and respected by those who have encountered him. They noted that a man like Dr. Sanusi is what Nigeria needs to bring the desired progress to the country. About Dr. Uh, Sanusi is his philanthropic nature. Is one man that you see his hands in all aspects and all parts of Yoruba land. What engineer Sanusi is doing for us in Nonara is so significant that I've never seen anybody. Uh, he's setting the pace, but I'm sure that others will follow suit very shortly. He means a lot for what he's doing, not only to his family, to the community, and sports world in general. Traditional rulers were not left out in acknowledging the achievements of the celebrant. You know, I won't believe he's the one. He's not garrulous. He's not a garrulous person. Yes, this is a man of the people. He's a man that cherishes culture and sports, and a man that is interested in developing the grassroots. So the 51-year-old philanthropist and his wife, Joyce, the kindness has just begun. Get God that can see what you contribute to humanity. It's a positive result, and the people, they are happy and they are appreciating what God is using us to do. for all he has been doing within the family and outside the family. Notable among the philanthropic gestures of celebrants is the opportunity given to indigent young Nigerians to develop their talents in sports. Congratulations to the celebrant. We wish him all the best. It was three days of celebration for Christian faithful from the north central and parts of the northeast and northwest of Nigeria at the Middle Belt Praise Festival in Abuja. Mitaire Ikben captured the sights and sounds of the Praise Festival with featured prominent gospel artists. It is another historic worship at the National Christian Center where for the first time these Nigerians are coming together in what they tagged the Middle Belt Praise Festival to celebrate God's faithfulness and the bonding of cultures. here is that as praises go up, divine blessings come down. The conveners see the three-day faith gathering as one that supports the country's diversity and the need to harness him for national development. Actually, this is very, very significant because uh, this is dealing with the identity of a people. And the key here is that they need to unite themselves as one people and stop quarreling each other or fighting each other or having tribal differences. God put us in the same region for a reason. Middle Belt is the glue to this country. It is part of the country that keeps Nigeria together. Priority is the spiritual side of unity. To be united under God. To understand our identity as God's people. We can praise God and when God receives our praises and our prayers, the first time like this, I hope we have more of it. We must understand the significance of cohesion. Together, the stronger we shall be. Day three of the praise party attracted Vice President Yemi Oshiba and more top government functionaries. For the Vice President, the festival was not for speeches. Amidst the singing and dancing, worshippers were admonished to sustain the attitude of praise and strive to foster unity and peace in their communities and the country in general.
Those were beautiful renditions. I'm sure they lifted your spirit. Time to pause for some commercial messages. Newsline returns shortly. Travel a lot. Canada. India. Times Square. Hollywood. <laughs> Shonda, New York. I don't be back in India. <laughs> this tour is going to be fantabulous. I'm telling the truth. We are shutting down London. But it's been an awesome time hanging out with you. It's time for dance. You must be on glow. Is that your new pickup line? Uh. <laughs> glow Super Value Pack. Enjoy more talk time with data and more data with talk time in Nigeria and your favorite international destinations. Because that's a comedy that I like to talk. <laughs> so true. So what do you do? Oh, <laughs> I call you. Dial star triple seven hand to choose a plan. Now, so my brother, so DJ Festus, start scratching and start winning. The Dago Taste Met Bag of Goodies promo done there extended by one month. Oh, wait till you they wait for cars, motorcycles, refrigerators, and cash prizes still there to win. Oh, buy a bag of Dago Taste Cement today. Open now, remove the scratch card, and whatever you see inside the scratch card, now where do you go win? Come to the nearest redemption center to claim your prize and enjoy your goodie win. Scratch and win promo. Discover the all new Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Lotion, specially formulated with Nivea's Deep Moisture Serum and Africa's Natural Cocoa for 48-hour deep moisture. Glowing, radiant skin with Nourishing Cocoa Lotion from Nivea. Get 48-hour deep moisture from the new range of Nivea Body Lotion. <sighs> this used to be me. But that was before I got the perfect bag. It's handy and easy to use. All I need in one compact space, just like my MTN Extra Value Plan. I used to get one plan for my calls and then try to remember which data plan worked for me. Roaming was a totally different ball game. Not anymore. I've got the MTN Extra Value all-in-one plan. If you're a data buff like me, you get extra data with some time. And if you like to make calls, you get extra time with some data and when I'm abroad I automatically browse chat and call right on the same time. MTN Extra Value was made just for me. More of data or calls whichever one you prefer MTN Extra Value is made just for you. What we are really cultivating here is a better future for all Nigerian women all and it's not always easy. Panadol Extra relieves headache, backache, joint pain Toothache and menstrual pain. The pain is worth it. From our wonderful family, meet Smalley, our little one. He's always hanging out with friends. Packed with healthy nutrition, nourishing vitamins, power of protein, strength of calcium, revitalizing energy. Hollandia yogurt is bursting with goodness. Inside and out. Hollandia yogurt. It's all good. Son, being good at something requires strength. It requires pushing yourself. It requires putting in more. That's why the new improved Born Vita is with vitality and a great taste.
chest are already waiting at the pool. It's headache, cold, pains all over my body. Cold time anti cold tablet and powerful ingredients specially prepared to bring you fast relief from headache, body ache, cough, flu, cold, and fever. You feeling now? Wow, I feel great thanks to Cold Time Tablet. Cold Time Tablet also available in syrup for children. If symptoms persist after three days, consult your doctor. Cold Time and Cold Tablet, a quality product from Embassy Pharmaceutical and Chemicals Limited. Cold Time Anti Cold Tablet, your visa to healthy living. Thank you for staying with Newsline. Having lived an exemplary life as a Christian and philanthropist, family and friends will forever treasure the memory of late Ivumena Ifeludu, whose remains were committed to Madras recently at Udedogo Ugeli North local government area of Delta State. Austin Ademodu brings highlights to the funeral service held in honor of the 84-year-old matriarch at St. Andrew's Anglican Church, Wari. For late Madam Evumena Efeludu started with a service of songs at the Cathedral Church of St. Andrew Anglican Church, Worry. If we don't to God, there is no way God can take us to heaven. Defying the heavy damper, family and friends gathered once again the next day at the same place to pay their last respect with a funeral service. As a devout Christian woman leader in the church, the Anglican women gave defied all us to witness the burial rites at her family compound at Odeho, Uyeli North local government area of the state. She single-handedly raised up four children by herself without the fatherly care. After the interment, the in-law visits to center stage as Pastor Ray Bufre and other in-laws to dance to perform the rites. She she was a down-to-earth person. She was an open book. She can't watch a fly, but she will tell you as it is. Very frank, very down-to-earth. For children and grandchildren, late Madam Hevumena Ifudu will be greatly missed. Yeah, I miss her because I'm very close to her. And uh, whenever I'm with her, she only give me advice. My mom, oh, so many things I can remember about her. I love her so much. She's fun to be with. She laughs a lot. She's very funny. She can crack a lot of jokes. Very friendly. Jovial woman, kind-hearted. It was a delight and a joy and just an absolute blessing to us and the whole family. The first time I met her, I saw a very outspoken, transparent woman that feared the Lord. That group from Udu and other performances thrilled the dignitaries at the reception with plenty to dine and wine. Late Madame Ivumena Feludu, popularly known as Mama Tomatus, is survived by six children and hugging her children. May her soul rest in perfect peace, amen. Meanwhile, it was an outpouring of emotions by family and friends as the remains of a former staff of NTA Joss and an evangelist, Florence Obiobasi, were laid to rest in her country home, Okuma, in Yala, local government area of Cross River State. Elias Itiav reports that a funeral ceremony attracted sympathizers from far and near. The funeral ceremony commenced with a night of praise in honor of the deceased, late prophetess Florence Obi Obasi, who was a former staff of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA JAWS, where she worked under the present Director General, Malam Yakubu Ibi Muhammad. In a funeral mass, Pastor Philip Ochaga noted that death is a necessary end to man's life and urged human to mend their ways with God ahead of the judgment day. I don't know when your time will come. I don't know how you answer that call. Will you answer 
that call as an unbeliever, or you will answer that call as a believer. Elder brother of the deceased, Mr. Patrick Ode, and others eulogized the uncommon qualities of late evangelist Florence Ossi, noting that her demise has created a vacuum in the family which will be difficult to fill. It will be difficult for us to stop money her because of the sterling qualities she has. She was my light. Anything I do, she checkmates me. And I feel without I am lost. If I am sick, she will not rest. She will make sure she calls the night. You know how I'm very. She's a loving mother. A loving uh, uh, mother, sister, cousin, don't name it. Highly, highly likable by every member of the family. I just pray the Almighty God to give me the strength and the family, the other members of the family. They to carry on because it's a big blow, it's a great loss on us. Born in 1964 to the family of late Pa Ijate Ode Ihimu, the late evangelist died on the 12th September 2019, leaving behind a daughter, Jethro Ohudu Odu, her siblings, and many other relations. And in line with the biblical scriptures, which says, Man is made of dust, and unto dust shall he retain. The remains of late prophetess evangelist Florence Obi Obasi have been committed to Mother Earth in her country home. A painful person. May her gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. That's Newsline this week. Hope you enjoyed your time with us. Join us again next week for another super duper edition to have a productive week. Up next is Alibaba Seriously, and looks like your is a new Ali. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to go now, but make sure you join him and enjoy the program. Good night and God bless Nigeria. Uh -huh.